All right, welcome into the Blood Prison Shakedown. Thanks for joining us. My name is Vic, and I got a special guest this week, a uh, veteran in the industry of film and TV, doing special effects, makeup, everything. I've known this guy a long time. Please welcome to the show, Gino Crocnali. How are we doing today, man? Good, Vic. It's great to see you, buddy. And yeah. it's, uh, thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. Thanks for it. coming in, man. Yeah. I know you got a little drive. Yeah. Coming drove in Pittsburgh. for us. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. Gino, uh, Gino and I go back to my radio days when I first met him uh, when he did the Haunted Attraction. Gino, here we do. I mean, I kind of showed you the haunt before we got started a little right. bit. So it's a big Halloween themed place other than, you know, we do the tours and everything. But why I'm here is for the Halloween thing, and that's kind of how you and I met. Right, right. Was through Halloween. I was doing advertising for uh, you and Bob Kurtzman on your uh, joint haunted attraction you did. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Remember Over in that? Crestline, that was great. Right. Yeah. Uh, Bob and I. Um, it's interesting that I was running a couple haunts in uh, Pittsburgh. Yeah. Prior to uh, you know hooking up with Bob here in Ohio. Mm -hmm. And Bob and I go back to the K and B days in, in Los Angeles. I've known Bob for now thirty six 37 years we've been friends right anyway um i had a deal in uh pennsylvania to do a haunt at a mall a closed mall right and uh i was down at the city meeting like making sure everything was going to go okay fire marshals electricians all oh that yeah stuff. and vic they hit me with a bill i said we don't even make that much on the haunt like, <laughs> right. how am i gonna cover yeah. this so the deal fell through that night Kurtzman called me just hey Krog what's up you know how you, how you doing yeah I said ah dude I'm kind of bummed man my haunt fell through here in Pennsylvania he went what do you mean so I told Bob the story he said pack it up bring it here yeah he said I guarantee you we won't have a problem I go what do you mean man he goes just get here dude pack yeah. up your truck bring all your stuff so that was that first year at P13 mm -hmm. and he uh, you know our first meeting was it just joking with you know um, <laughs> right uh, I forget uh, the chief of police and Butchie, Butchie, Butchie and I Will forget Hyde, yeah. the other guy, uh, the Dugans. No, that yeah, Joe and probably Joe Dugan and uh, Petey, probably Pe Petey. I think yeah. it was Petey and 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 Bob's brother. And we sat there, and I'm putting out all my you know papers and like all this stuff. And I remember they looked at me and went, "Dude, it's already done. Just <laughs> let's just have a meal and drink and hang out." Yeah, all right. All right, I think I'm in good hands here. And that was it. Yeah. <laughs> That was a really fun haunted attraction. It was called the Horror Monster Rampage. Right. Great. I still have the commercial I made for it. Oh my god. On the radio. Yeah, I got that awesome. saved on my hard drive because I, awesome. it was one of my favorite things I ever did. <laughs> and uh it was a cool haunt. I mean, you go in, you got the the movies going, mm -hmm. and then there was just so much of the movie memorabilia that you guys did, and right. it was mostly a, mo probably what 90% your stuff. It was and, all my stuff. Yeah, yeah, in that trailer and it was just really fun cuz it was like a movie, almost a movie museum slash haunted house. Exactly. Because you yeah. had chainsaw guys chasing you, plus right. then you had these really cool like statues of like, I think Jason was in there. And, right. Yeah, and it was a cool. Bunch of pieces, and it was funny. We put that whole thing together because it was late in the game. Yeah. Because it fell apart in Pennsylvania. So when I brought it here to Bob that first night, when I laid out the maze with just literally chalk lines, because mm -hmm. we didn't have time to really go crazy. Steve had guys literally following me mm -hmm. anchoring it to the floor and <laughs> nice. as i was chalking it yeah. so we built that in i think it was like eight days wow up and open it was insane yeah it was insane and tony tony did a lot of for course us. yes yeah so a lot of good guys i mean it, i could have never done it without all that you know the army of bob's people that that made sure that happened so yeah. it's cool and, and dude, you too, man. You helped promote. I mean, when yeah. we first met you, I remember we came to your studio. Me and yeah. Kurtzman came there, yes. and uh, we met you guys, and um, I think we did an interview with you for the radio. We did, yeah. And then yeah. you cut that stuff for us. Yeah. Yeah. So that was cool, man. Yeah, we made that's you know, that was the initial, you know, because I, I believe the radio station, it was in Mansfield, here in Mansfield, where the reformatory is. Okay. But the tower... The broadcast tower was actually in Crestline, so technically it was a local radio station, right. and I think that's why um, Bob said, "Well, let's do it here because it's Crestline local," you know. Gotcha. And it was just like it's just weird how that happened because you know it's like I attribute a lot of that to what I'm doing now, 
you know, how I'm right. where sure. I'm at doing this. You sure. know what I mean? Running sure. this haunted attraction. Which is um, unbelievable, by the way. I oh, mean, thank you. Yeah. Vic just walked me through the first, you know, uh, part of it or, yeah. or a small part of it. Right. Yeah. And it's the basement. phenomenal, yeah. dude. It's so thank good. You. Yeah. It's badass. I want to roll back. Yeah, you gotta if you you gotta come by in October. Now that Walking Dead is wrapped, yeah. and we are done. Yes. Then and now I have time to breathe. I've been down in Georgia for eleven years. That's crazy, man. Finishing that show. So now we're wrapped. Dude, this October I'm rolling in, man. Hell yeah, man. Be badass. VIP treatment. Thank you, bro. Just brother. for you. Thank you, man. Appreciate <laughs> it. No, it's it's fun and it, it's a team. It's team. You know, I got a great team under me. Of course, you know Brian Dembski. Absolutely. He's my friend. main yep set dress guy he paints everything he puts the sets together i got a build team that's out of this world with mike tom and anthony right. um they had that up and so it's like really you know a very collaborative situation i can't do everything sure you know i'm not an artist you know that mm -hmm. but it's like having that you know having that team under you and that i mean i treat them as equals right? i hate saying under me but you know they have just as much input as it's not just me saying, I want to do this here, here. It's like, Brian's like, oh, this would be cool. I'm like, right. hell yeah, let's do it. You know, right. well, you trust them. That's the key. Absolutely. You trust your yeah. crew. You know, you trust their abilities. And Brian, and I've known Brian since the K&B days back in Los Angeles. Like, yeah. you know, in the, I guess like maybe late 80s, somewhere around there, early 90s. Yeah. I've known Brian a long time. And, and yeah, we and talked. Buddy. Yeah, we talked about you because I had Brian in for a podcast. Nice. And he, and I was like, now you came to Creature Core, or Pre Precinct 13, and, you know, he's like, well, Gino called me and right. said, hey, we're doing this thing. And, you know, so right. we had talked about you um, previously. So right. it's like, we got to get Gino in here. Oh, that's cool. You know? Yeah. And, and yeah. thank you, Vic. I know this has been a long time. We've been trying to do it because yeah. I was away for yeah. all the Walking Dead stuff. And yeah. I just knew we would just when the time had to be right. Sure. So, again, thanks, man. It's a, my no, pleasure, thanks man. for coming. And getting into... so. We've established that, you know, you've done the Haunted Attraction, but right. mainly you probably haven't done that for a while. So mainly, though, you, I mean, I just remember back at the shop watching you sculpt different things like for the Rage because right. that's what we worked on together. Right. Right. Um, and just just being floored, being, oh, my God, I feel <laughs> a pile of clay. Next thing you know, it's like, the, I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> oh, that's when I knew I was like, you know, like, holy shit, this is legit, you know. Yeah. <laughs> how did you, how did you know? Because, like, we've talked so much. You know, we've thrown the football out back. Right. You've told me about how you played football right. when you f grew up in Philly. Right. You know, you come from Philadelphia. How did you get into the the artistic side of things? Was it like just a natural God given yeah, talent? It's 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 interesting. My uh, both my parents could draw. You know. Yeah. And so they they had that. Um, I'm assuming that was passed to me to some degree. Sure. Um, but I didn't know much about what I do is makeup effects. I mean, I, I, I grew up in the 70s, and there wasn't a lot of information about makeup effects at all, but I knew I liked monsters. I loved mm -hmm. monster movies. My dad would always, hey, man, stay up late. You know, Frankenstein's on, The Mummy's on, there you go. Back in Notre Dame, you know, all the old classics, Creature. So I would watch them and, and be dead for school the next day, like just be <laughs> exhausted, learning nothing. That's right. why my English sucks. But... um. <laughs> I had this infinity of like, I, I want to know more about this, but there was no real literature for anything. Not like today, you just go online and pull it up. And I remember seeing The Planet of the Apes. That was the movie that really like was like, what the hell is this? These are talking apes. This is blowing mm -hmm. my mind. As a little kid, freaking me out. And I remember uh, somebody, I think my dad said, oh, it's, 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 a, it's a makeup on those people. They're wearing makeup. I'm like, that's impossible. Makeup is what mom wears. You know, what does that mean? So I started to just learn a little bit of whatever I could find about what that meant. Mm -hmm. And then I remember uh, my freshman year of high school, uh, the summer of freshman year, I was bored. So my parents took me to an art shop and I bought clay for the first time. So I start sculpting Plan the Ape heads and, you know, just little figures and stuff. And I start going, wow, I really like this. And I could see in a matter of hours the shape taking place of a, oh, that's, Dr. Zayas, mm -hmm. you know, my, at least in my eyes, it looked like him. <laughs> sure. <laughs> and then, you know, time goes along, you're still interested. Then The Exorcist came out. And then that was the next movie that blew my mind. It's like, wow, this is really unbelievable. I'm still a kid. Mm -hmm. Long story short, Fangoria comes out all of a sudden. Fangoria magazine. Yeah. And that magazine made guys of my age group 
want to do makeup effects more because now we knew this was a tangible profession and Fango would give you articles and like give you interviews with Stan Winston and Rick Baker and Dick Smith. So you'd go, oh, that's latex or oh, that's cotton and latex. Oh, that's wax. That's You're starting to learn these little terms of what they are. So Fango and those artists like fed off of each other and made each issue that important. So once I discovered that this was a real thing, probably high school now, um, I'm like, I got to do this shit. No matter what, I got to mm. do makeup effects. Now, I'd been sculpting and painting and drawing all along, but now I knew there was a craft that had to be learned if I want to do this on actors or in movies and all that stuff. Right. So that's that's kind of how it, the birth of it happened, you know. So then from there, did you just... Did you go to school or did you just like head out to L.A.? How did you do that? Well, I graduated high school in 82 and that was kind of like the, the, the gold rush was starting to happen for mm. these. Everybody I met in L.A. was from another part of the country. Mm. There's very few guys that were literally from L.A. It was Michigan, Ohio, tons of people in Ohio. Mm. Um, Anyway, so we all went out there with this dream of doing makeup effects. So what I did was I went to a, a school called Joe Blasco's Makeup Effects, mm -hmm. but it wasn't makeup effects. It was more like beauty and stage makeup. So I was a little disappointed in that at that time. It was a six-month program, but I did meet some people. And my first job came from one of my good buddies that I'm still friends with today, uh, Mitch Devane, mm -hmm. who, who was Rick Baker's main sculptor for years. Uh, Mitch got me my first job in 1985 so the schooling wasn't the best but i met the right person to get my first right. gig so that's how it all kind of came down and my first movie was troll troll yeah. 1985 um I, I worked for a guy named john beekler who, who's passed away since and uh john hired me as a painter and like a finisher i would do the hair work and the mm. teeth and the eyes and all that kind of stuff and then i went to italy with the show which was pretty amazing almost yeah. you know 19 year old kid in Italy sure. making a movie even though Trolls can't be and kind of it's 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 more popular now than yeah. it was then sure and uh it was just so much fun like it was a dream come true that's I awesome yeah. you got to go to Italy yeah like you said 19 years old yeah young kid doing like what he thought he wanted to do in his basement in Philadelphia and now <laughs> right. here we go you know <laughs> so it was cool that's amazing man yeah, so super fun so um since since I've known you, like I've seen you like sculpt, right? I've seen you sculpt these amazing sculptures. I've seen you Thank apply you. makeup. I've seen you paint. What is your, like if you're like, this is what I'm going to do. If this is my favorite thing, what is it? It's hard to say, Vic, because I go in spells. Like um, Walking Dead took so much application work out of me. Um, just applying makeups yeah. every single day. Walkers. Bite gags, heads exploding, arms ripping off. Like it was a constant makeup effects thing, which I'm thankful for. Mm -hmm. It was it was an amazing experience. But last season, which is just we just wrapped, you know, a month ago, um, the whole last five months I was there, I sculpted a full size creature from the Black Lagoon. Yeah, because I fell in love with clay again. Yeah, like I hadn't touched it for so long. But I was like, you know what? I, I really miss this. So I, I, it's hard to say which one I would put in front of another. It's just, mm. it's just a mood thing. Like, right. you know, I, I'm really into this now. You know, I can still do them all, but I, I'm really digging this part of it. So yeah, yeah it's hard to say. Though. Are you, are you done with zombies? I hope, man. <laughs> I just, you know, I, I hope so. I hope. Uh, I shouldn't say that because, no. you know, I, I will miss it in about six months. Yeah. In about six months, I go, damn, that was a lot of fun. I wish I could, you know. But AMC has a couple spinoffs. So sure. we'll yeah. see We'll see what lands eventually. But, yeah. uh, you know, I told you earlier, right now I'm I'm uh, working on this uh, Sylvester Stallone miniseries yes. shooting in uh, Oklahoma. So I'm, I'm going in and out on that, um, That's uh, cool. doing makeup effects and stuff. So Isn't it funny fun. how... I mean, think about how, like, the early days of when you first got started. I mean, at least maybe it's perceived this way that everything is done in California. Everything was done in L.A. on lots yeah. or something. And now it's, like, everywhere. Everywhere. Walking Dead was in Atlanta, right? Atlanta the whole time. Yeah. And not even the city. I mean, we shot in the city at times. It was south of the city in fields. Yeah. <laughs> you no. Know? Right. Just 
you know, whatever woods, you know, that's it. The whole yeah. the bulk of the series. It's funny. There's a in joke with the Walking Dead whole community of mm-hmm. everybody who's worked on the show. Um, right near the studio where we shot at, and it's in the woods. This studio, so mm-hmm. we're always in the woods. There's a little road called Crook Road. And it shoots off of the main street driving to the studio, Crook Road. And it's a little, like, connector street that nobody ever drives on. Yeah. We shot the bulk of the series on Crook Road. It's, <laughs> really? It's hilarious. We always, anytime we needed a quick little Crook Road, Crook Road, because <laughs> it could look like an abandoned street. It could look like woods. Yeah. Uh, and the police would just block off the ends. And it was probably, I don't know, three quarters, a half a mile long. But it was a connector street. Nobody ever used it. Yeah. So Crook Road is legendary. So any Walking Dead fans are looking at sites, go to Crook Road. They're going to go there, yeah. Go to Crook Road. That's amazing. Bulk of the series. Yeah. <laughs> That's a line from Lebowski. Bulk of the series. Bulk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's good stuff. Oh, man. That is good stuff. So The Walking Dead, you got on with that. Well, you, you were... Kind of there from the inception, right? From season one? No. This no, is, okay. Let me tell you the story. It was kind of crazy. Um, I, I, I've worked for KMB since, uh, like, I think, like, 1991. I think we did Pumpkinhead 2. It was, like, our first big movie. I was involved with them. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway. So, you know, a lot of years, a lot of shows, tons of movies. So we're doing Predators. Uh, Robert Rodriguez there's Predators we're shooting that in Austin, Texas Mm -hmm. and it was uh, like 11 weeks of nights so uh, one night lunchtime would well lunchtime would be like 1am so one night uh, we get a phone call that um, hey Frank Darabont just sold this comic book to AMC called The Walking Dead and he was asking if anybody you know hey man I sold this thing you guys want to work on it we're all like yeah whatever who cares at the same time, there was a, a film shooting in Pittsburgh called I Am Number Four. Yes. And it was a Spielberg, you know, was involved, like uh, executive producing. It was a book that was on the, you know, the charts. And anyway, it was, it was a big deal. So at one point, uh, KMB sends me back home to Pittsburgh and says, you supervise and do I Am Number Four. We're going to do this crappy little zombie TV show. And then when we're done, we're going to join you in Pittsburgh for like I Am Number 5, I Am Number 6. There was Mm -hmm. a whole series of these films they wanted to do. So everything comes out, and I Am Number 4 takes a crap, does nothing, Walking Dead's big as it can be. Yeah. So I started, instead of them coming to me, I went down to Georgia and started day one, uh, season two. Season two, okay. Season two, and then I've been with it till it just wrapped. Yeah, you know, last month. So, so when you say K and B, just so everybody knows, that's uh, an effects company in uh, Los Angeles, Correct. which was Kurtzman, uh, Nicotero, and Berger. Correct. Right yes. now, and now Greg Nicotero, I mean, basically, after so long, he directed a lot of the episodes and everything. Yeah, coming out you know, the last what five, six seasons. Right, right. And Greg's a, a dear friend of mine. I've known Greg since the early days, and Bob and Howard. We're all still good friends. Yeah, I mean, I've done. A, I've been in the trenches with these guys for. Over three Long time, years. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Once, once we got you know the makeup effects account for for Walking Dead, uh, Greg eventually started. You know, he started doing like some second unit work, and mm-hmm. you know, he worked his way up the ladder to to become a, a director on the show. Right on, correct. Yeah. yeah so then, um, working. Do you do you primarily work with K and B when you're you're doing the film stuff or even TV or or do you are you out with you know other places as well? Um, the bulk of my work is with K&B. Right. Um, like right now, I'm not with them. Mm-hmm. I'm with uh, a good friend of mine, two good friends of mine from uh, L.A. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and right. uh, they um, they called me for this job to come in and help. That's so, cool. Yeah, so I, you know, I, I have bounced around sure. at times. and uh, But, yeah, K&B is like, you know, a, a home field advantage type sure. thing. You know, that's where I've always been. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's, that's just the yeah. – I remember like – Bob telling us stuff about, you know, the early days and you guys working at the shop and doing all this stuff. And and does that still go on? Do you still go out there to the shop or is it all just like remote location stuff? Yeah, Vic, I haven't done much shop work at all for yeah. a long time. I think that's why the sculpting love has floated back into my sure. life because I was a sculptor for K&B for mm-hmm. years. Um, now I've been mainly for the past 11 years has been walking dead. So I've been doing, you know, Pittsburgh to Atlanta flights constantly for yeah. 11 years 
all Delta miles, you know. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's, a, it's been all application work. You know, I, I, I was talking to somebody the other day. I said, I've, ma- I've done so many makeups on The Walking Dead that I could post a, a walker makeup every day for like the next over three years. That's crazy. That's crazy. A brand new makeup every day. It's a, in the thousands, probably. That's because yeah, because you see some of the scenes. There's like, just it's insane. thousands. It looks like thousands of walkers just right. You know, so I'm just like, whew, and man. some some years you'd have three hero makeups in a row. You know, starting at six a.m. or whatever, and you'd knock them all out. Some <laughs> days by the time you would go to set, your first makeup's already wrapped and it's coming back for cleanup. So sometimes you never left the trailer. He just did makeup, sent them out, and then they would come back and just get the makeup off. It was yeah. crazy. Yeah, some crazy years there. Now, something else with The Walking Dead. Since we're on it, we'll, yeah. we'll talk. Because sure. truth be told, you've like you said, you've been doing this since 86. So you've done 85. so... 85. <laughs> 85. So it's like so much more than The Walking Dead that you've right. got. Correct. You know, you look him up on your IM, on the IMDB page, you're going to see, oh, oh shit, this guy, yeah, this is more than just The Walking Dead. You know yeah, what I mean? a lot of stuff. But since we're on that... Um, cause it, I mean, it was huge for, you know, the entirety of its, of its run. Correct. How, how did you go from, cause not only did you do some makeup work, a, a lot of makeup work, you also acted. Correct. Yes. Yeah. So yes. how did that, how did that transition? <laughs> it's funny. We would, uh, we would have production meetings. Like we would get the scripts, we'd read the scripts and then we would all get into the, go into the, uh, there was a theater at the studio, it sat probably 40, 50 people, and they would host the production meetings in the theater. And um, we would do like page turns, like, you know, okay, page one, blah, blah, oh, Rick yeah. does this, page two. <laughs> Sounds fun. Daryl does this. Yeah. And we would get to makeup effects stuff, and they would always refer to our team, like, guys, how do we build this? How do we do this? We'd have little meetings about it. And a lot of times they would just, mainly Greg would just go, uh, Krog, you're going to play that one. I'd be like, <laughs> all right. Cool, dude. You know, it was literally that simple. Yeah. You know, he was good, dude. You're gonna do this one. All right, cool. So, uh, from season three up to I think nine, I did a main Walker every year. That's like, cool. Like one that was very pivotal. In, yeah. In a lot of the, uh, they weren't just walking by; they were parts. You yeah. Know? So uh, yeah, I so remember. I've fun. seen you. I remember seeing you going, "Oh shit!" Yeah, it's pretty There's fun. Gino. It's so yeah. funny. It was fun, like watching that with my kids. They were little at the time, and. Like, guys, there's dad with his, you know, face smashed in. Yeah. So crazy. That's good, though, man. Yeah. That's fun. That's funny to see, you know, that your that your kids can get involved with that and be like, oh, man, that's just crazy. Right. And then the last, the, one of the last big ones was uh, Winslow. Of course. The guy with the spikes all yes. over him. It was the, uh, I had the fight with, with uh, you know, uh, and Andy Lincoln. Yes. Who plays, who plays Rick. And I remember when that day was coming, and it was literally two people on the call sheet, him and me. Mm-hmm. And I'm older than him. And it was 95 degrees out. And oh, I'm man. wearing three rubber suits. Yeah, that thing looks it's big. brutal. Yeah. And I told the set medic, I said, listen, I'm not as young as I used to be. <laughs> I'm in my 50s at yeah. this time. And I said, uh, uh, I think we should prepare for this the best we can yeah. if you want me to last all day. Because it's just too hot. Yeah. It's just too hot. It just yeah. happened. To be, and we were in that pit of trash. Yes. So there was no air either. So the humidity in that pit was 100%. It was ridiculous. And that and Andy is just him. He's just He's him. not buried in He's not appliances. Buried in yeah. And on a, from a production standpoint, when you have two cast members, that's all you're shooting all day. You're not going to another location. Or, mm-hmm. oh, he, he got sick. We're going to go over here now. We had to get through this. So it was like, it was harrowing like i was very like oh man i come on i psych him i feel like i was playing football again yeah i had to get you know i had to get your head right yeah around it you know and uh yeah it was fun man once we got into it like all that went away and your mind gets just locked into what you're doing and we had a blast we had so much fun me and andy yeah it was i'll tell you a little funny story okay Uh, a good friend of mine and kevin wasner who, who worked on walking dead and kev's still a dear friend very talented guy uh, there's a part when I'm actually on the ground as Winslow, like mm-hmm. Andy has beaten me to the ground. And in the script, he's supposed to cut my head off. And uh, while I'm laying there and we're, we're blocking the scene, Kevin slid a fart machine <laughs> under my ass as I'm laying in the costume. <laughs> and as Andy's straddling above me, like waiting for direction, Kev's hitting the 
the fart machine. And, and I can, I'm looking through the helmet out of these like little pinholes, you know. And I can see Andy like looking at me and then like looking around like, is he, he, is he really doing this right now? So after three, four times, then he went, wait a minute. And then he found it. But it was so funny. That's good it stuff. Was so man. funny. That should be on behind the scenes because people should see that. That's amazing. Right, right. It's pretty funny. It's funny you bring that up because, um, you know, I looked all over for this because I used to have a copy and I wanted to bring it up on the screen, but I could not find it anywhere. Um, one of my first experiences working with you at Precinct 13 right. was when we shot the the porta pot video for uh, Kurtzman <laughs> Sanitation, right. where the porta pot, <laughs> where you're running everywhere, right, and the, right. you're trying to find this in this porta pot, just like a hot rod, and it's running through all right. the streets and everything, right. and you're just running through the city of Crestline, yeah, just farting, oh, and just add, just you holding your, it shows you eating a bowl of chili, right. and. <laughs> <laughs> the chili's dirty Sanchez. Dirty Sanchez. That's right. I think yeah. Kurtzman did that. But yeah. That thing, that was so funny. Bob literally called me. I think we shot that on a Saturday. Yeah. Bob called me, I think, Thursday. And just went, Krog, what are you doing this week? I went, I don't know. What's up? He goes, I need you to come act for me. I went, all right. Yeah. No clue what I was doing. He just really? said, be at, be at the studio by whatever, <laughs> you know, 8 a.m., 9 a.m. So I drove in. And then he told me the whole thing. I was like, dude, you're kidding me. He goes, yeah, man, it'll be fun. I said, I'm game. Whatever, yeah. Whatever we got to do. Just tell me what I got to do. That was fun. Yeah, it was fun. And it, it was, was funny when it was over because it was just like, oh, my gosh. I remember Steve, Bob's brother, told me that he would get more calls about the commercial. Mm. Nobody wanted his business. Yeah. But they just wanted to say, dude, <laughs> funniest commercial. And I think it won some, like, awards or something. Yeah, it was, going, yeah. I can't yeah. remember. Yeah. It did. It did. It won some awards. Was it but... Kurtzman Sanitation, Porta, yeah. Porta John? Yeah, something like, something like that. Like, yeah. I don't remember. Yeah. I don't remember. But it was, I remember, because I was, like, new to everything, and I was right. just having so much fun doing that. <laughs> right. And then just when we're talking about what the commercial was going to be, I'm like, Okay. All right. right whatever. Yeah, whatever. You guys are professionals. I'm just here. <laughs> right, you know. Right. Right. So just doing that was hysterical, man. That was great. And then when we saw it when it was over, like when they got done cutting it, I'm like, oh my god, this is gonna this is gonna be good. Yeah. Now I believe to this day, um, I'm pretty sure that your picture is still on that truck. They put that picture on there. Come on. I swear, dude. I, no way. Within a year ago, I've seen it. What? Yeah. The picture Vic, that's of you, crazy, on man. the side we of that did, truck. We did that. How long ago was that? What year was it? 2005. That? Five? Yeah. Oh, man. That's insane. Yeah. That's insane. But yeah, that's every, like, I'll be driving over to <laughs> see you, Kurtz and Santa. Oh, oh, oh shit. There's man. Gino. That's so funny. You coming out of that Port John just, right. ah, you know, just like, <laughs> right, right. I made it. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome, man. That was good. That's actually what made me think of that. So, also, another question. Here, here's something else, yeah. uh, kind of Walking Dead related, not to, you know, jump back to that's that, okay. but. Um, I, you know, I've known you a long time, so, but I, I obviously didn't know everything you've ever done. So I was kind of looking through your profile and everything, and I saw a movie you were on called The Walking Dead. Yes. Right? Yes. Yep. How ironic. But it's oh, nothing yeah. to do with zombies. No, it was... Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Is that an early movie you did? Yeah, it was early 90s. Um, it, was, um, it was supposed to be... It, they, they told us it was going to be like the, uh, the black experience of Vietnam. Oh, okay. So that's it, it. Was like a lot of it was a black, mainly a black cast. We had a, a black director, and uh, it was real low budget. And we shot in Orlando, and we shot um, like kind of like deep in like swampy stuff. I remember, mm. I remember one day on set seeing a guy with a rifle, thinking, "What the what the hell is this guy?" And he was a gator spotter if something went wrong. Oh man, yeah, it was that crazy. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it was called The Walking Dead, and it was just about you know uh, uh, Vietnam and yeah. how the soldiers got through stuff. And I had a, uh, I had some makeups, a few gags, um, but it was fun being in Orlando for you know six weeks or whatever it was. I don't even remember. Yeah. It was quick. It was real cheap, and uh, yeah, so weird. Cause yeah, again, I look back and go, wow, I did that, and now I did this. It's just. It was because I, when I looked at it on the page, I think it says, because I even wrote a Vietnam movie, 1995. And I was just like, wait a minute, 
no, that can't be right. There's got to be a mess up there. Right. So then I click on it and I see, I'm like, oh no, it was an actual movie. It was an actual movie. Yeah. 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 And it was fun. We had a great time. You know, yeah. it was uh, being in Orlando in the summer, which was brutally hot, but uh, we wore fatigues every day. Like, mm-hmm. uh, you know, those nets for bugs and stuff, you know, that you wear on your head. Sure, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was it was a little gross and sweaty, but uh, still fun. I look back at everything. As brutal as they are going through them, you look back on them with kindness. You forget yeah. the, the hard hours and the hard days and go, damn, I'd, I'd do it again. The same sure. thing with Walking Dead. Right now, I'm like, <laughs> nah, zombies, but six months from now, sure, why not? You know, yeah, exactly. Jump back in. Well, on, on The Walking Dead, so you... Won an Emmy, correct? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. How did? The, how what was that experience like? Ah, it was fantastic. Yeah. I, um, it, you know, I, I'd been my whole career has been a long run. You yeah. Know, and, and I never did it for any accolades. Honestly, I sure. never did. I did yeah. it because I, I I appreciated the work. I like doing something that you know uh, that I love that I can get paid for and make mm-hmm. a living. You know, absolutely. It was all that stuff. And uh, I lived in L.A. for 20 years, like, oh, you know, just so much. And I never even thought about awards. And there were times where, you know, I've worked on award-winning things but never won one. You mm-hmm. know, just one of that. So I never really thought about it. But then when I started on Walking Dead and that year it, it got, um, y- you know, you have to submit the episode to the Academy. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. And they vote whether you make it to the finals. You know, anybody can submit. You know? Right, and then they get it down to I think maybe five, five, five uh, finalists, and uh, out of those finalists, you know, you, you hope you make it. So it was the first time I was nominated, like on the ballot. So it was wonderful. My wife and I were flown out by AMC. All That's awesome. First class and red carpet. But it was it was a wonderful experience, and we friggin' win the damn thing. Yeah. It was amazing. Like you're sitting there and your category comes up. And uh, I remember Vince Gilligan presented. He's the creator of Breaking Bad. Okay. And um, your heart's just pounding out of your tux. You know, you're just sitting there like you almost can't hear. You almost can't even grasp the moment because your (laughs) adrenaline's pumping. Yeah. And as soon as I heard the walk, you know, the the first syllable of the walking dead, then we knew we had it and we jumped up and kissed my wife. Then you're escorted up and yeah, it was amazing. You stand there, you know, you don't have the trophy yet. You're just standing there and you're looking out of just thousands of, of, of industry people. Sure. And you're like, this is kind of cool, man. Yeah, like I yeah, wasn't expecting this, is, yeah. but this is kind of cool, you know. So it was fun. It was really, and it's it's sitting. I have two things that are very special to me. One is the Emmy, and on the other bookshelf, I have a signed autograph of uh, you know the statue of Stallone in Philly. Yeah, that's by the art museum. Yeah. I have a like a, a small scaled one. It's about twenty two inches high. Yeah, and I worked on Creed two. Yes, and Stallone signed it for me. Oh, that's cool. And it's so cool. So I have that on one and the Emmy on the other. And they're like my two favorite things. Yeah, yeah. When I when it's all done for me, they're my two two main things. <laughs> that is awesome. It's funny you mentioned Stallone because they did a movie here called um, Escape Plan. Uh, I think it was the third one. Okay, and I I didn't. I have a Rocky poster because Rocky is like, I mean, it's one of my favorite movies of all time. I just love the story. I love the underdog. Right. Because I, I mean, you know, I'm not like, I've been an underdog my whole life, but you kind of feel that way from time to time. And sure. it's just like very inspirational movie to me because everyone thinks like, I'm sure you get it too. It's, you know, it's all horror. You must love nothing but horror movies. I love a lot of horror movies, but I love a lot of movies. Absolutely. But yeah. I got him, um, he signed a bunch of stuff when he was here. Um, I got a Rocky poster signed, That's which was really awesome, cool. Yeah, now, I didn't get it like a, hey, nice to meet you, sir, anything like that. I didn't get nothing right. like that. But right outside the studio here, I, I ran into him twice. And it was both times right outside the studio here. It was just really funny because I, I just happened to be walking out, and they're shooting. And they were shooting at the same time we were setting up for Halloween. So we had to kind of oh, wow. collaborate and be like, all right, well, we're going to be over here while you guys are shooting this, and we're going to do all this stuff. So it was all this going on. We actually lost a week of our season because of it, which wasn't a big deal at the end of the day. But he was he wasn't on set that day, wasn't supposed to be. But he comes in anyways, right? And I just happen to be walking out, open the door, and I hear I hear him, right? And his right. his voice is yeah, it's un, un, <laughs> unmistakable. Mistake, yeah. <laughs> so I'm sitting there and I'm just like, oh shit. So I I walk across the hall, and. 
because I don't, you know, I'm like, I don't know. I don't want to get in his way or whatever. And he comes walking through and he's like, oh, this place is huge. You know what I mean? And, <laughs> right. I, and it was just like, I was like, oh my shit, that's really him. And he's, he's right. like, hey man, I was like, hey, how you doing? And he, and he, you know, keeps on walking, just reeks a cigar. I mean, just cigar, just, you know. Right. And then the same thing, um, it was this, the other time. But that, that time was just funny to me because it's just like, you don't realize oh, until you hear it, you know, it's like, Absolutely. oh my God, that's him. That's you know what him. I mean? Yep. And it's one of my favorite movies. So I, I might've been a little like, oh shit. You know, that's cool to, you know, meet that guy. But then the other time he was right down the hall and he was talking to the director and they were kind of going back and forth about whatever. But right. that's the, really the only interactions. But I was like really the same way. I was just Absolutely. like, oh, this is right. awesome. Yeah. And I, I agree with you. Rocky to me is like, it's it's a it's a masterpiece film. Yeah. Even though it's super low. If they shot it for under a million dollars. Yeah. Really no name actors. It's it's a phenomenal film, and to yeah. me, I, to this day, it's in my top ten of all time. Oh, me too. I think it's an amazing movie. So yeah. he was always on my bucket list to work with. So I've always been a fan. I have very few people left. It's like him and Mel Gibson are my two last guys. <laughs> right. And now I got Stallone. Mel's next, I hope. But anyway, uh, being on Creed Two was that same thing, dude. Mm-hmm. Just hearing his voice is like, dude, it's him. It's yeah. the guy. It's the guy I've been watching my whole life. Yeah. I had a really interesting uh I talked to him a little bit on Creed 2. Like here and there, we, you know, uh we would talk about boxing and stuff, just like, you know, little things here and mm-hmm. there. We say good morning to him, good morning back. One day I'm in the ring and uh, I was just touching up Michael B. Jordan's makeup and uh I went over to check the 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 Russian guy, I forget his name. But anyway, I'm I'm in the Russian corner checking up on his prosthetics and stuff. So I just turn, and the camera guys are setting up. So you know there's downtime between setups, mm-hmm. as you know. Mm-hmm. So there's, you know, eight minutes of just standing there. And I see Stallone looking at me from across the room. I'm like, oh, boy. You know, he's just looking at me. I'm the like, mean mug by Stallone. Oh, yeah. And he had his, his Rocky hat on, yeah. the, the leather jacket and all that. So he gets into the ring and starts walking toward me. I'm thinking, all right, I guess I'm fired. I don't know what I did wrong. Like, yeah. you know, he's coming at me. And so I'm standing there. And at the last second, he got to me and then he knelt down next to me. I'm like, what is And he's looking out the ropes. And I turn and Dolph Lundgren's behind me. <laughs> That's funny. So he was coming over to talk to Dolph. And he yeah. was like, hey, Dolph, I think we should uh, tell these guys on like how we did it on Rocky IV. And like, yeah. He's talking to him about how they fought a certain round on Rocky IV. Dude, I'm in heaven. Yeah. I'm like, this is the greatest moment ever. I'm <laughs> listening to Stallone talk to Ivan Drago yeah. about how they fought <laughs> 30 years ago. You know, so it was pretty cool. Was that is moment. cool. Yeah. He was here too, did some uh, low-budget movie, uh, Dolph Lundgren, like a year ago. Right. That's the one cool thing about here is is um, that, that'll that happen. You, yeah. you You know, you get some, some movies in like... Um, of course, you know, Shawshank Redemption was shot here, but that was way before us. They did one here. I think it's right there beside you. Judas and the Black Messiah. They shot that here. Um, I think that was in 19, like right be- like before the COVID stuff happened. Right. And, you know, so there's these, these things that happen that are, you know, really fun. That makes it interesting to run a haunted attraction. Absolutely. At, uh, at, the, um, at the wonderful performatory here, that's for I, sure. And, and pulling up today, like when I drove up to it, like it, it it's... It's like omnipresent. Like you yeah. look at it and you you just got to stop and yeah. go, dude, this is badass, man. This place is, how could it not be a location for everything? Yeah. Man, it's so cool looking inside. Right. Too. Well, I told you too, we do a big tattoo and music festival here. Right, right. You know, well, I mean, we don't do it, but, you know, a, a company comes in and, you know, so it's like, it's growing. Right. You know, it's just Mansfield. I mean, we're not Columbus, Cleveland, Pittsburgh. We're none of that. You right, know what right, I mean? We're right. nothing like that. So the fact that that goes on is is really cool, dude. I want to come back if you guys do the concert thing again. I got to roll back. Sure, it's, yeah, it's too cool, man. Yeah, I'll let yeah. you know what the dates yeah. are, and yeah, we'll, we'll hook you up. Yeah, that'd be sweet. Um, so when I was looking through some things on you, just trying to you know gather like you know what we could talk about and everything, because right. like we could sit and talk all day about stuff that we've we done. Should. You know, yeah, for sure <laughs> we can. But I got some pictures, and like I said, I found some online, and I'm thinking when you said earlier about. I could post a picture of the walkers that I've done, you know, and do it for three years in a row every day. Right, right. So I'm like, that's interesting you say that. So I got this one here of you. Now, I'm assuming that's um, a body. It's a dummy. Yes, yeah. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Now, do you remember that photo? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah? Um, yeah. Um, our set photographer was a guy named Gene Page, real nice guy out of uh, Orlando. Uh-huh. And uh, I remember we had... 
um, I forget who was directing this episode, but they wanted the head hanging over. It was like a like kind of a rock wall. We were in the city for this too. This was in, in Atlanta. Okay. And the camera was going to dolly across and pick up that head hanging, you know, in, in the foreground. So when we did the first uh, rehearsal pass, it, it it wasn't punched up enough. Like the color looked a little washed out. Mm-hmm. So that's what I'm doing there. I'm basically trying to give a little more definition. To the like the neck, like you know the the muscles in the neck, and sure. uh, I did some around the cheekbones and tried to enhance the uh, the gore around the teeth and stuff, and uh, like I was saying earlier, yeah, and and they're my uh, uh, dollar store sunglasses on <laughs> <laughs> right there, just because you know you you so lose those your Ray Bans, huh? those are dollar store, they're dollar store, yeah, yeah because it's uh, you lose them so quickly, you know, <laughs> you throw them in your pocket, they break, so you don't care to you know. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I, I remember that like it happened the other day. It was it was that, uh, and I remember after I did this, I remember looking across and seeing Gene like on his knees getting this photograph. Yeah, kind of like oh okay, all right, that's a good one. That's good stuff. Yeah, it was fun, super fun. Uh, let's see the next one, Elena. There you go. Oh yeah, this is um, this is Predators. Yeah, yeah this is. Uh, I think uh, that was Derek Mears who played the classic Predator. So what I'm doing right now is I'm painting uh, the black around uh, Derek's eyes because he had to wear he had to wear like prosthetic just uh, like giant donuts around his eyes painted black because when he put the mask on there was a little bit of a gap yeah so we had to make up the distance so every day I would it's funny before he would put that head on I would do the black donuts on his eyes and then I would do a kiss makeup on him mm-hmm. just to be stupid. You know, so he probably Gene Simmons <laughs> makeup under there. That's awesome. So yeah, that's what I'm. I'm just touching him up, uh, just because I think his close up was coming up at this point. He was up on a. Uh, I think they had him tied up to like some podium or something. Yeah, I don't really remember, but uh, and I think that's the first time I shaved my head. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was the first head shave right around that go. time. Yep, there you go. It kind of just <laughs> sticks after a while. Huh? It does. Yeah. Yes, I kind of dig it. All right, let's see the next one there. Oh, here we go. Oh, here we go. Now, that's our crowd. Uh, the, the people that watch this show is going to know that one for oh, sure. Oh, yeah, guys. Uh, House of a Thousand Corpses. Um, really a great experience with Rob Zombie. Um, uh, that's me on the poster on the cover. or cover, however, what do you want to yeah. call that? And, and what happened was um, I did not apply that makeup. Uh, a, a great friend of mine named Wayne Toth, mm-hmm. who is Rob's main artist for everything he builds all his stage stuff he does the guys makeups when they need makeup and so wayne called me up because at the time i was doing a lot of playing in suits and stunt performing and makeups and uh he called me goes dude what are you doing the next uh next week i said why what's up he goes i i need you to play makeup rob needs some people i said absolutely dude of course Mm -hmm. and i hadn't met rob yet so i was so excited just to work and meet rob so uh wayne brings me in and does this makeup on me. And we shot, you know, three nights with it. It was just I at the time, just myself and this girl in the, the bunny suit, pink bunny suit. And, um, you know, we do the whole thing. We had a great time. I got to know Rob, meet him a little bit. He At lunchtime, he's the director of the film. Mm-hmm. He would sit with the makeup effects guys. Yeah? Yeah, he wouldn't sit with the producers or the writers or anybody else. He would sit with the makeup effects guys, That's which awesome. I thought was so cool. Yeah. And then when it was all done, Wayne... Called me one day. He goes, dude, you're not going to believe this. I go, what's up? He goes, I'm looking at your face on a billboard on Sunset. I went, what? He goes, Rob picked your face to be the poster of, of House of Thousand I was like, what? Yeah. So then Wayne took a photograph. And I think it was back when you still printed pictures. Yeah. Because I remember yeah. I think he mailed Late me Late 90s. Yeah. yeah, right. And uh, yeah, so it was, it was a great experience, man. Really, well, really fun time. You, you're kind of infamous in that because it kind of ties together because at the shop, when I first started working at Precinct 13 with, with Robert Kurtzman, um, we did the sequel called The Devil's Rejects. Oh, right. Which I got the poster in there because that's like the first movie I technically worked on. Okay, so we did the sequel that Bob and uh, a guy named Dave Matherly, you remember Dave? Oh, yeah, I remember Dave. Did yeah. the visual effects and all that stuff, right? Okay. So Bob was telling me, I don't know if he ever told you about this, but Bob was telling me, that he showed Rob the the commercial of you in the porta pot. Oh, the porta jar. Yeah, <laughs> and, and he said that Rob goes, 
Is that fart guy the one that uh, we put on the cover of House of a Thousand Corpses? And Bob's <laughs> like, awesome, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it kind of came full circle, yeah, you know, awesome. for the second movie. It was really funny. I'm like, that's funny how, oh, it's the fart The fart guy's uh, that guy on the cover. Right. Of, yeah. I picked fart guy. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's awesome, man. That yeah, that hysterical. was that was a blast. I actually have that poster uh, in my basement bathroom. Ah. So the basement bathroom's mine. It's painted like blood red with yeah. pipes and stuff, and it's real. Yeah, yeah. And I have that right there. Yeah. It's pretty now, cool. did what, did you work on the movie or in the movie or anything? Just performing in it. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, and, and it's interesting. Like that movie, uh, the movie people saw was not exactly. I think the movie Rob intended because it went through yeah. a lot of. You know, Universal dropped the show. Then you know, Lionsgate picked it up, and there was a lot no money. You know, it was a, it was a lot of struggle. So sure. I think a big part of uh, our stuff that was shot, a lot of it wasn't used. I heard there were some problems with exposures and stuff. If if that's true, Rob, if I'm not, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but I remember hearing stuff that that's why we were in it a lot more than you saw. Yeah, a lot more. Um, I was in that makeup probably you know five six times. Right. And, you know, that's a lot. That's to cool. not be in it as as much as it was it should have been. So yeah, yeah, it's very cool. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, it's a great movie. Love yeah, it. man. Yeah, fun one. Yeah, Rob was here for uh, Incarceration last year. He was one of the headliners. Yeah, you know, dude, I would Sunday. love to uh, if he ever comes back. I got to hook up and just yeah, say hello, yeah, man. for sure. It's been it was so long. Yeah. It was uh, it was a great show. I mean, Rob Rob Zombie. I saw him back when he was White Zombie. Was still with White Zombie. Right. I saw them then too. Yeah. So right. it's just oh, right. even back then the shows were. Phenomenal. Great. great. Yeah. And I worked with him again on Halloween 2. Yeah. Uh, you know, we shot stuff in Connecticut, and me and Wayne went to uh, Halloween, or went to Connecticut for Halloween. And uh, again, working with Rob, it was a blast. He's a good director, man. Yeah. He's really solid. He, he's, I, I like how he works. Yeah. You know, I'd like to work with him again, but we'll and see. Check out the, uh, doing the new Monsters, yeah? Right, right. Yeah. I know they, it's going to uh, be interesting. They were in Hungry for that or something. Yeah. They went over there. Right on. Yeah. yeah. All right, Elena, what do we got next? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that guy? <laughs> do you yeah. remember that, or was it a blur? No, I I, I do. I, I remember it well. Um, I, I, we had it's funny. We had drinks before we went there. Yeah. But at that moment, adrenaline takes over, and you're no longer buzzed or anything. You, yeah. Your your body burns through it. I was crystal clear from once we won on through the rest really? of it. Yeah, it was, it's such a high. I think my wife took that picture. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah, we were walking out, and uh, we were all so excited because now we were going to this uh, bar across the street where mm-hmm. um, uh, Robert Kirkman was waiting for us yes. and a couple of the producers. And I think Vince Gilligan showed and Vince, again, from Breaking Bad. And, mm-hmm. uh, so we were getting back with the AMC guys, and then we did a bunch of photos over there as well. So this was like really the first photograph after we came out of that's awesome uh, the uh, the arena or whatever. It so was. who was with you on stage? Who all went up? Um, it was our our whole team. It was uh, Nick, Greg Nicotero, myself, Jake Garber, Kevin Wasner, and Garrett Emmel. We were the five. That's uh, awesome. And we were the five like main team all the way through. I think Kevin dumped out around season nine. Uh, Jake dumped out season eight. And Garrett was, I think, a little bit into 10. Yeah. And so it's weird. I'm the only one that crossed the finish line yeah. after all these years. Yeah. And I did it with a uh, all-Atlanta crew. Like, oh. all, all the original guys were gone. Sure. So it was, it was interesting, yeah. Great crew, though. Great, great bunch of young artists coming Absolutely. up out of uh, Georgia, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah, good stuff. I think we got one more. It's yeah, It's probably sure. going to be Walking Dead related. What do we got? One more, Elena? Hey, there's Winslow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that, that was that was a blast. Yeah, I, as much as there was, um, what's the word? There was a lot of danger around this whole f- day. Yeah, just cause of what I'm in. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think how how it go. I did. I wore um, a cup, you know, like from football practice, okay. like a, a, to to protect me because Andy, I couldn't barely see him. Yeah, and if he'd need me or. Hit me there, dude, I'd be done and yeah. all this stuff on me. So I work <laughs> up. Right. Then I put on a spandex suit over that. And then we did the undersuit, which held all the pipes and spikes. Right. Then the suit, the head, and then the helmet. And uh yeah, it was pretty I was entombed in in rubber for this. Yeah. But man, it was I, I look at that picture 
And it doesn't matter what it went through to get it because it's so badass. I, yeah. I, I love it. And uh, I, I have one of my cousins, uh, my cousin Chuck in Philly, he was walking through a Philadelphia um, tattoo show. Mm-hmm. And he sent me the photograph. I could show you later. Uh, there was a guy getting Winslow tattooed like from his, sh- his shoulder That's to killer. his elbow. And my cousin rolled over and goes, that's my cousin. You get- <laughs> and the guy didn't quite, what? What are you talking about? He didn't quite understand <laughs> yeah. it. But uh, the, once he explained it, so they got a photograph together and he sent it to me. But it's, it's, it's that picture. It's so cool, man. That is yeah. awesome. Yeah, that's so, pretty sweet. When, when you were shooting that, um, well, so, somebody, did you know, like, dude, this is going to be iconic? Because everybody who knows, like, if you say the guy on The Walking Dead had all this, oh, yeah. I mean, did you know that uh, this is going to be one of those lasting characters? You you know, you never really know, Vic. Yeah. You never really know. There was ideas that it would be just because we've never seen that before. Yeah. Uh, you're just like, yeah, it could be super cool. You know, you, you hope. Once I was in it and was walking to set, mm-hmm. I feel like I was going to football practice. Yeah. so much shit just on you. Know, spikes yeah. and helmets and stuff. Probably just sweating and everything. Soaked. It was pouring down the back of my neck. And um, uh, while we're doing it, you know, I'm, you know, you're in your own head, and you're going, okay, I can't see it, but I feel this is really kick-ass looking. Yeah. So yeah, it was. we got to make this badass. So you never know, but there's that hope that, like, yeah, this could be a this could be a memorable one. Yeah. Absolutely. Early days, early days of the haunt. You know, someone said something's like. I want to do that. And it's like, no way, dude. I'm like, <laughs> you wouldn't last two minutes in a suit like that, let alone all night in a haunt season. No way, man. But it would. that's what people do. They see this stuff and they're like, oh, man, that would be so cool to see and, in a haunted house of some sort. You know what I mean? Right. And Vic, the the that day, our main day, the uh, we shot 17 hours that day. Mm-hmm. And I was in makeup. My call was 4 a.m., 4 a.m. Man. And I couldn't sit in a chair because they had to put all that stuff on me. I had to sit on like a sawhorse. And uh, Kevin Wozner and uh, Jake Garber did the makeup and start putting all the pipes and the blood and everything all over it. Um, I didn't go to set till 7.30. Mm. So it was a three and a half hour application just to get in it. Jeez. And then we started shooting. What, time, was, what time did you get done? How long? 7.30. It was like, so you figure 12 hours shooting, three and a half hours. That's rough. So it's, it's almost 16, like a 16-hour day. Yeah, dude, it was rough. And it was 90, you know, 4, 95 degrees out. So. Did you get to keep anything off that? No, no. I don't have anything from it. I wish I had the helmet, which would be kind of cool, yeah. but I don't know. It's probably be. out there. So probably some collector has it probably. sitting in his uh, shelf yeah. somewhere. Yeah. I wish. I wish I had something. That but, would be cool. Uh, yeah. So I, I meant to ask you uh, earlier. I was looking through uh, when, when I was talking. I was looking through your IMDb stuff. Um, there's a there's different credits on there, and I saw one. I'm like, that's funny. Uh, Gino Blaze Crognali. Where? <laughs> what does that come from? That's my real middle name. Is it really? It is, and it's also both of my son's middle names. That's awesome. I, I didn't a, know that. Yeah, my older son is Gino Blaze, and my younger son is Joe Blaze. That's cool. Um, what it is is I'm Italian, and my father uh, was born on February. I think it's February second. Yeah. And in in uh, Catholicism, that's the day of the blessing of the throats. I, it's it's a very religious thing. Okay. And it's Saint Blaze. Is the blessing of the throats. Ah. So they named him, you know, Blaze as a middle name. It just passed down through the generations. In Italian, it's Biagio. Oh, but I But Americanized, it's Blaze. Okay. So, yeah. Just wondered. Yeah. That's, that's, it's, it's accurate. That's funny. That's good stuff, yeah. though, because my one actor um, in the home, actually two actors, I got Dawn and her her daughter, in, well, soon-to-be daughter-in-law, Allison. So it's... it's Dawn's grandson and Allison's son, and I can't think of his. Oh, his first name is is Blaze. Nice, yeah, you know, so very cool. It, it, but it's <laughs> it's spelled different um, somehow. I don't know, but I remember, yeah, I remember we're, that we're the A Z B L A Z E, but I've yeah. seen it B L A I S E. I think that's like how that he spells well. it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's more. I think the American version of it. So, so yeah. okay. And and I again I feel like you know, we've talked about this stuff before, but just for you sure. know the, the yeah. people watching, because a lot of them, a lot of people want to know. I get the, I get this a lot because I mean I I didn't do nowhere near this stuff, but 
I know you, I know like, you know, some people in the industry and they're like, what's this? What's that? And I'm like, I don't know, dude. Let's ask them. Right. So that's kind of what I'm going to do now if you're sure. cool with it. Ask Absolutely. you about a couple couple movies if you're cool, like your Absolutely. experiences on them, all that yep. stuff. So you mentioned you did Troll in 1985. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> you talked about that one. Right. Um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What was the, Now that's in, in our world, that's aside from Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which was shot in the 70s, I believe. Right. You know, that's kind of a big movie. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's yeah. a, everybody loves that movie. So what was your experience like on that one? My experience on that was, uh, it was the first time I got to work with Tom Savini. Mm-hmm. And it's funny because through high school, when I, I knew I wanted to do makeup effects, but didn't know how to go about doing it yet, all my books, I would draw like Tom's movies and Tom, you know, I'm drawing this like Italian guy. I'm yeah. Like, the, the people are like, what is this kid? Nuts. <laughs> So I was a big fan of Tom, you know? Yeah. And this was the first time I got to work with him. So that alone was was fantastic. And I loved how Tom ran the shop. He, we got, it's a rare occasion when you can go to a location where you're going to shoot and the production allows you to prep the movie. Mm -hmm. So we built everything in Austin. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we didn't build it in Ohio and then ship it all. We built it there. So we were close to everybody for anything so when we get down there tom uh he uh he looked at his crew and it was me mitch devane john vulich uh sean McEnroe, gabe bartalis and then bart mixon came in anyway the main guys were me mitch sean and john vulich he gave each one of us a specific task that we could take from beginning to end, which mm-hmm. I thought was phenomenal. It was such a cool thing to tell these young artists, you're going to do this from life casting to application, which was fantastic. So I was in charge of the skinned guy, mm-hmm. the guy that got skinned. Yeah. So it was just, it was an amazing experience to be doing all that, like under Tom's watchful eye through the whole process. So it was mm-hmm. really, really fun. And I had a blast. But I, can I tell you a quick story of about course, it? absolutely. <clears throat> so we're, we're in Austin, and they bring us in, me, Mitch, and Johnny from L.A., and um, our first week, they bring us in like on a Friday, L.A. to Austin, and they give us our per diem, which mm-hmm. is your money to live on. And immediately we go out and get hammered. <laughs> right. So we're just drinking and carrying on. And the weekend became like a pretty big party. So Sunday night, we still hadn't shut it down yet. We we're still carrying on much. So Monday morning is our first day of work. Mm-hmm. So we're, we're heading to work and it's Tom Savini's driving, John Volich is in the passenger seat, Mitch, me, and then Sean's in the back. And it's like a minivan. And we're driving and, uh, and, uh, I'm not feeling great. And I'm looking at Mitch going, dude, I don't think I'm going to make it. I don't know if I can make it. I don't even know where we're going, but it's just not working. Yeah. So right in the middle of the drive, I like kind of, I don't know if it was a door or a window, but I opened it up and threw up out the van. (laughs) Wow. And I had long hair then. Yeah. So the vomit like went in a spray, (laughs) like across my hair, across one sunglasses eye and showered the whole side of the van. And, I remember, I'll never forget this, I came back into the van like with vomit dripping on me. I look up and Tom's looking at me through the rear view like, you're done. (laughs) It's like, oh man, I've waited so long to work with this guy and I just blew it. Yeah, literally. We we get to the studio uh, where we were building everything and I I stagger out, I'm in bad shape. And Tom just hands me the keys and angrily, wash the car. So... I had to go wash the car. It was my first job on yeah. Chainsaw 2. And then, like, you know, a month into it, when we all proved, like, we were the right guys, you know, he mm-hmm. had the right team. We were at dinner one night, and he said, dude, he goes, after that first day, I was scared to death that I had a bunch of drunks on my hand that weren't ever going to get anything done. <laughs> it was hilarious. And Tom and I, listen, we've been friends since. He was at my wedding. He's like an uncle to me. I've, I've known him now most yeah. of my career. So, yeah, it's pretty That's fun. good stuff. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, no, I never heard that. That was a new one. <laughs> How's it going? Yeah. Okay, um, Nightmare on Elm Street 3. Yeah, another great experience. Again, this these were the years where I was young and really learning um, as much as I could and, yeah. and growing by leaps and bounds just by the people you're working with. 
And that was with Kevin Yeager, an mm-hmm. Ohio guy. Mm-hmm. And to me, Kevin is still one of the best artists doing makeup effects. He's absolutely fantastic. I loved working for Kevin. Yeah. And um, uh, at, at the time for Elm Street 3, Kevin was grooming me for the Freddy makeup. So I, I had applied it with Kevin. Oh, cool. Right. Under, under his eye, and Kevin and I worked it out together and stuff. Um, and then uh, when Freddy's Nightmares TV show came up, mm-hmm. Kev just gave me the makeup nice. and said, hey, man, dude, I've done his makeup a million times. It's yours now. So I ran with Robert for like the next, I don't know, year, maybe two, I don't remember, and did all that stuff. This was the height of his popularity. We were right. doing photo shoots and live appearances and mm-hmm. you know so it, it ran for about two years the freddy stuff but that's cool again under kevin yeager's uh uh eye and and helping me grow it was sure. it was priceless yeah it was great that's great yeah. man yeah there was like what six nightmare on elm street yeah i kind of lost track after yeah. a while because I, <laughs> I just felt like I, I i had my fun with it now i then i moved on to right it. yeah i went on to something else yeah there yeah. was a few so then, and like like I said earlier, it's it's not all horror movies, right? Um, uh, later on, you worked on like Kingpin, that was on your list, yeah. which is not a horror movie at all, <clears throat> right? And it's actually a comedy, right? That's one of the greatest movies. <laughs> I love that movie, right? right. Uh, we still reference that movie to this day. <laughs> we still do that's because awesome. it's so funny. You know, Woody Harrelson was hysterical. Bill Murray, all those guys. It yep. was so funny. And the we, we referenced that movie a lot in the um, the tongue exercises. Oh, right. You right, know, right. you better work on your tongue exercises. Like, right. we're at the shop. They're like, how are we going to do that? I don't know, but you better get it done, because if not, you're going to have to work on your tongue exercises. <laughs> right. Because right. we're referencing <laughs> right. Kingpin. So how, how did that come to be? I Kingpin's one of my favorite things I've ever worked on. And yeah. it's funny, That's I just awesome. recently... I just recently, I, my attic is full of, it's like a museum of Hollywood things. Yeah. I found the script to Kingpin, the nice. original script That's I had. That's awesome. And I have like notes on it and stuff. But uh, Kingpin was, uh, it, it was amazing because it wasn't a horror film and it right. wasn't. So it was a little bit of a diversion for me, you know, because I think I had just come off of uh, From Dusk Till Dawn. Okay. We just wrapped Dusk. And then that's the next thing that came up and uh, shot in, in Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm from Pennsylvania. So I was like, ah, it'd be great. I'll be close to home. I can go back and do this movie. Not really know much about it. Read it on the flight and rarely have I laughed out loud <laughs> reading scripts I did with Kingpin. Yeah. I think the Fairley brothers are, are fantastic at comedy. I mean, yeah. They're probably oh, they're man. modern geniuses of comedy. <laughs> um the experience was fantastic, and and uh, the thing was with Woody's, uh, you know, he has the prosthetic hand, and it was basically like a, just a, a really thick latex glove that he mm-hmm. had to wear. Um, I thought that would become like something as a prop. I'm a makeup effects guy. Mm-hmm. Um, but after the first couple days, I was getting Woody prepared to wear the hand. He just said, well, you'll, you're going to do the hand then, right? You're gonna, and I was kind of like, uh, okay, sure. So basically, I was I was on, I was there for every shot of that movie, which mm-hmm. is rare for makeup effects, right. you know, because you you play when your stuff plays. You you do your makeups, you know, you may shoot here or there. So it was it was for that reason it was super cool. But it's got I got to watch that whole movie get made. That's cool. It was the first time, 1995, that I got to literally just watch the Fairley Brothers direct and and stage everything. So I was really close to that film. Like that yeah. that movie meant a lot to me. And That's I met cool. my wife on that oh, movie. Oh, well there too. you go. So yeah. And what was she doing? Time. What did she do? No, she um my, my wife Tammy, she um she's a Pittsburgh girl yeah. and she used to fly for US Air. She was a flight attendant. Oh gotcha. And we met through a friend, but I was in Pittsburgh doing Kingpin and I'm like, hey that chick lives here. I'm gonna give her a call, you know. Right. And, and then we got together and we've been married now forever. So that's twenty five cool. years. That's very cool. Yeah, it's very cool. Another yeah. reason why that movie is Another dear to your heart. Yes. There you go. Oh and weird thing, yeah. Jake, I'll tell you this too. I had a Kingpin poster. You know, the posters come out after the movie's done, so you can't get them signed. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're released after the movie's wrapped. Sure. So I did a movie in in, uh, in Pennsylvania called uh, Out of the Furnace. Mm-hmm. Christian Bale, uh, Forrest Whitaker had a pretty good cast. Woody Harrelson. Yeah. I'm like, oh my god. So I bring the poster in, 
And I'm like, Wood. He's like, of course. So he signed, like, you know, to me, Gino, you rock, love Woody, you know. Yeah. So I got it signed eventually, which was pretty cool. Yeah. Well, another another full circle story with this one. Right. Which is why I put this movie on here. Um, we were, and you, you know what? Actually, you, the, you were gone. You had left because you were on these movies too. Um, P13? P13. Okay. When you guys went out and did... Um, Oh, what is that called? The the zombie uh, western. Oh, uh, undead um, or alive. Undead or alive. Right. Yes, go on. So you were on the first two, I think. Right. And then uh, Bob directed the last movie, which escapes me. I can't remember the name of it. Uh, it's the witch. It had the witch in it. Right. With, I, uh, I, design, I I built that makeup, but I think somebody else applied it. I'm house sure. applied it. House I believe. applied. Yeah. Okay. Um, you weren't on that. Well, then I got to come out. Um, I think it was. The last week of shooting, we were out there a little more than a week. Right. And Bob's like, hey, I'm going to fly you and Brian out and uh, tear down everything and load the truck and drive it back to the shop I'm from New Mexico. Like, oh, sweet. I'm, and I'm, you know, like, yeah, I'll do it. That'll be great. You know, so we do that. We go out there and we got to go to the rap party. Oh, right? nice. Nice. So we go to the rap party and we're hanging out there and they were shooting No Country for Old Men at the same oh, time. Oh, good one, man. So Woody Harrelson's out there. Oh, right on. Um, what, it's not like you know we knew or Still. where he was, but he was out there. Whatever. It was no big deal. The bar we're having this rap party at, Woody Harrelson shows up, right? Nice. Shows up there just out of the blue. Nice. I didn't see him. Brian saw him. He's like, hey, man, look. And I was like, what? And he's like, Woody Harrelson. I was like, oh, shit. What the hell? You know? It's like, he must be out here doing something, you know, because New Mexico was big for movies back then. Right. So... You know, it was just kind of funny. That's cool. It was. Yeah, very cool. Well, <laughs> I hope he doesn't kill me for telling the story. Bob sees Woody Harrelson, right? And goes over and starts talking to him. And we're with him. You know, so we kind of walk up and he goes, Woody! Like that. And Woody kind of just looks up at him and he was just like, hey, man. He's like, hey, man. He starts talking to him. He's like, he goes, I worked uh, I'm uh, from K&B. On, we did Kingpin. He was like, oh, okay. And he's like, you know, you remember Gino? He's like, Oh, do 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 you work for Gino? <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> we started laughing. I'm like, oh god, here we go. That's you funny, know. He's like, man. what? No, no, he no, he works for me. He's like, oh okay, but That's then he so said he referred to you, which right, is like, right. yeah, of course, I remember Gino. Yeah. Yeah, I love the guy and everything. Yeah. and we we're just like, oh, oh, it's funny. <laughs> it was funny because we great. all had been like, you know, just we'd been drinking a lot, and right, right. it was just funny because that was another full circle <laughs> one that came. You know, Bob probably loved that. You know, <laughs> yeah. it's so great. He might not even remember because, like I said, we were, you know, we right. were all pretty to rap up. party and we were just, you know, having right. fun drinking and everything. It's funny too, Vic, on Kingpin, because Bill Murray was there. Um, I worked on a movie way before Kingpin called Frankenhooker. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and and Frankenhooker is a classic. Yeah. Um, and I have a little scene in Frankenhooker, which is hilarious. But anyway, that's not the, the point of the story. Yeah. Um, the uh, poster quote on Frankenhooker. Yeah. It says at the bottom, if you see any movie this year, it should be Frankenhooker, Bill Murray. Really? I swear to God. And I remember asking the director of Frankenhooker, Frank Henenlotter, Frank, how did you get Bill Murray? He goes, yeah. well, when we were cutting Frankenhooker, Bill Murray was in the next studio cutting something he had shot at okay. that time. He kept coming into the Frankenhooker watching their cut. He oh, said, this awesome. is the funniest move ever. Like he loved it. He really enjoyed Frankenhooker. It's yeah. so campy and stupid. <laughs> but um, anyway, yeah. on Kingpin, I brought my Frankenhooker poster. Yeah. And I said, Bill, will you sign this? And I rolled it out. He went, how do you know this movie? I go, I worked on it. And I, I'm in it a little bit. He went, oh my God, I love this movie. Yeah. So he signed my Frankenhooker poster. That's awesome. Bill Murray. It's hilarious. That's good yeah. stuff. Good one. Bill Murray, yeah, that, that the the Kingpin though. I've always wanted to know on Kingpin what was the weed budget on that movie. Oh, dude, <laughs> I I, they, I don't think there is uh, enough <laughs> yeah, right. budget for that. Yeah, that's good stuff. R- insane, man. Um, another one that uh, you you worked on. Well, it was on your IMDb page, The Green Mile. Yeah, and that was uh, and I brought that one up because it's a Frank Darabont movie. Correct. Yeah. After he shot Shawshank Redemption right. at this prison, he went to a prison. And so, what did you do on that one? On Green Mile, I was uh, mainly a sculptor. On oh, that. okay. I yeah. did. Um, I, I sculpted the two little girls that that uh, John Coffey's holding. Okay. When they find him. Yeah. 
Uh, I did one day on set down at uh, Warner Brothers for the uh, execution of the old Sparky. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I sculpted the dead um, Indian actor. I forget his name. Um, oh, yeah. Early in the movie, I believe. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Graham Greene? Is that, does that sound right? I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but yeah. I, uh, I had to do a life cast of him. And he had to look burnt like he had been through you know, old Sparky oh, gotcha. and all that stuff. So it was mainly sculpture work. Oh, gotcha. You know, a little bit on set, but not... The main set work, I think, Howard did, mm-hmm. Howard Berger, because a shot that I believe in Tennessee was a big chunk yes. of it. Yeah. And uh, Howard had to do the uh, the cancer makeup on the woman that John Coffey yeah. goes to. Yeah. Um, so, but we built old Sparky and, you know, we did all, oh, that's cool. we, we did Mr. Jingles. We did a, a, the mouse. a couple mouses. Yeah. I think one was like kind of mechanical and, you know, um, a lot of that stuff. So, but again, though, with Frank, like I, 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 I love working for Frank. I mean, mm-hmm. I think the guy, there's, there's some writers that just nail it, man. And he does. Green Mile, I can't even watch it that much. It's mm-hmm. such a powerful film. It is, yeah. You have to be emotionally ready to go down that road for three hours. Yeah, right. It's rough, man, yeah. like Shawshank is. Yeah, you know? sure. They're, they're movies you just don't pop in, uh, at least for me. But, uh, yeah, it was just one of those. When it came out, I'm like, I'm proud to have contributed because yeah. it was that good. I loved it, yeah. He came here a couple years ago for, um, it was the 25th, anniversary of the Shawshank Redemption. Oh. So like Frank oh, nice. Darabont, they we did a big event and Frank Darabont was here with um now obviously like Morgan Friedman and, and Tim Robbins wasn't here. Um but Frank Darabont was here. Um I I'm horrible with names, but the guy that played Boggs was here. Um oh, okay. I, uh, I, I know who you mean. Yeah, yeah you know what I'm talking about. about. He's yeah. he's been in a ton of stuff. Right. Uh the guy that played Tommy was here. There was and then um uh the Gunton, the war, uh, the warden. Oh right, um, right. he was here right. as well. So there was some. It was cool, and then I got to I got to meet Frank Darabont, which was really cool because Shawshank is you know up there too. Was Absolutely, the, a great movie that yep. I really enjoy, and it was you know close to home when it was shot. I was in high school, and the uh, the beginning of that movie is the, the courtroom scene was shot in my hometown. Oh, so get out! We're just in this little town. Wh- where Upper where, Sandusky, Ohio. That's where that is. Yeah, the courtroom scene. The courtroom scene. That's yeah. cool. I didn't know that. Yeah, I was like, I thought they staged it in here somewhere. No, like, no. Uh-uh. They they well, they shot a lot of places around, um, which a lot of people don't understand. Is like you know, you go back and see the big cell blocks. That's not here. The cell blocks. They built the cell blocks that they shot in the movie. They didn't actually gotcha. use the ones here. Right. A lot of people mistake that. But the funny thing about that was, is I was like seventeen when that movie was shot. Maybe right. seven, I believe I was seventeen. And I got busted for drinking underage, and I was on probation, like probation for whatever. And I had to go to the courthouse to see my probation officer. And we heard this movie was shooting, and we were like, oh, whatever, you know. So we go there, and there's, I remember this British guy with a clipboard and, and headsets. And he's like, no, mate, you can't come in here. You know, I'm just like, who the hell are you? You know, <laughs> right. and they were doing all this thing. And then we got to see the, the movie, the courtroom scene. Um, and then, like, the wood shop scenes were also shot over there okay. in the one lumber company. So. To get to meet Frank Darabont was, yeah, was kind of cool. Absolutely. You know? it was, it was and and really again, cool. Vic, that's on the top 10 list. Oh, yeah. Shank is it's just, a great movie. It's a masterpiece. Yeah. It's, it, that's one of those movies, no matter where it is on television, if you're flipping around, you're watching a couple scenes. Yeah. If you just catch it, I got to watch this. Yeah. At least to the next commercial, then you go, you yep. know, whatever you do. Yeah. It's so good. It is a good one. A um, couple more. Yeah, uh, one was I'm, Vic. I'm good on time, dude. Okay, we, sweet, we, sweet. We can do whatever you want to do, man. Because I'm fine. The one I remember back in the shop days, you telling me about. So I just kind of wanted to share that was Detroit Rock City. Ah, uh, kiss, baby. <laughs> yeah, kiss. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. One of my favorites. And again, it was. Uh, I got to thank Greg for that one, Nicotero. He really hooked me up. I've been a Kiss oh. fan since I was a kid. Hell yeah! My first concert. 1976. That's amazing. In Philadelphia, I think I was 12 or 13. Saw the first Kiss Alive album. Yeah. Like they were just finishing that, you know, that look. That mm-hmm. was the last look. Right after that, Destroyer came out and they changed outfits and it was a different, but I caught the end of Kiss Alive. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyway, the movie comes up and I think it's uh, Adam Rifkin is the director, also a big Kiss fan. And, um, he called, like, I think they were already shooting and said, hey, man, I need a favor. We don't have really any money for this. Mm-hmm. 
but I need an insert of the interior of Gene Simmons' mouth. I need like giant teeth and a giant tongue yeah. made. And uh, uh, can you guys do that? So uh, again, I thank Greg for this. He knew I would be all over it. So <laughs> right. he's like, I got a guy for you. Don't yeah. worry about it. I got a guy. He, he said, um, but he made a deal like, okay, if we build it, then the only thing is you got to bring this guy up to execute the gag. So uh, they agreed. Production agreed. Nice. So uh, I build this giant sculpt of this giant mouth, you know, built the giant tongue, the whole yeah. thing. Go to Toronto. We shot in uh, somewhere near Toronto. I forget the actual town, but it was a hockey arena. And they, like, did it in half, basically, and brought in all these uh, extras and stuff. But I had an all-access Gene Simmons pass. I would have <laughs> brought it if you wanted me to. Yeah, right. I still have it laminated his Gene Simmons that says film crew all access dude I just literally was a, the biggest fan ever I right. just literally watched these guys like a mental patient for hours <laughs> we shot for 16 17 hours Detroit Rock City over and over and over and again but uh I got tons of good pictures I got yeah. a little bit of video and and man it's a it was like I almost it was the epiphany of my KISS experience in my life because yeah. I remember looking at these guys in like Cream Magazine and Hit Parader, all these magazines that rock rock magazines and go like, who are they? Like, you know, they were almost like this iconic monster that we couldn't figure out. So that was that was the, the full circle on that when I got to yeah. meet the guys. Between <clears throat> takes, they had to rig the uh, pyro which took about 15 to 20 minutes, I would go up on the stage and just mm -hmm. stand there. And That's like, cool. And like look at them. <laughs> I'd just stand there <laughs> and look at them. Pretend uh, I was like... Guy? Yeah, pretend I'm like working on the mouth, you know, my giant tongue... Pretend that I'm doing shit, and then yeah. like, oh, there's Ace. Look at Ace. Yeah, because that's all. It was all the originals. Was the four originals. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's and awesome. I, I got my picture with a couple of them, which was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah it was pretty sweet. Yeah. That that was that was a, another movie that's not a horror movie, uh, more of a comedy. Yeah. yeah. You know, totally. coming of age for these kids going to see Kiss. Right. Banging right. bang. One of them gets to bang in the church, and he's all <laughs> right. You know, right. Not a horror movie at all. Really and, funny movie. And, and Vic, it was one night was the concert because kiss was on tour yeah and they agreed to do this one night and i give those guys credit they put all the the outfits on and the makeup and they you know movies you've been on them they're they're long movies yeah. take a lot of time yeah and this poor band who's on tour they're i think they'd be in cleveland the next night right like it was some crazy they were yeah. literally stopping in toronto to do this for the production and then they were out the door yeah. as quickly as they could be out that's and cool. uh, yeah, it was cool. They just they kept scaling. They shot everything wide first, five cameras, cranes, all kind of stuff, and then they would just keep scaling it down, scaling it down, scaling it down. So by the end of the night, there was like two hundred extras rather than five thousand, and uh, just Gene doing the blood, and right. I think he did his fire, and that was it. We're done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's pretty cool. It's, it's funny you mention that, like because I remember the first like when we worked on the Rage together. That was the first right. thing I'd ever done. Aside from like you know the commercials that we did, right, right, um, super excited for it. Yeah. You know, I've told this story a couple of times, but it, I was just so excited to do this. I was like, it's gonna be great. I'm doing sound. I've got you know, which I've never done before in my life. Right, by the way, right. I've worked in radio, you know, and done like production stuff. So I've never done this. I'm just like, okay, let's go. <laughs> you know, I got nice. all this gear and I'm like setting everything up and I'm and I'm thinking, you know, I'm ready. Let's do it. And I'm like, hey, Bob, I'm ready. And yeah. he's just like. All right, cool. Um, yeah, we're, we're waiting on lighting. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. All right, all right. We're waiting on light. Yeah. Bob, what's going on? I'm ready. Um, yeah, we're uh, makeup. They're still in makeup. And I was like, what the hell's going on? Yeah. I'm ready to go. No way. You know what man. I mean? But it's just, it's just, it literally is like, you know, then once the action starts, though, then it's right. like, it's kind of exhilarating. And you're like, oh my God, you know, and you're right. watching it and just seeing seeing it come to life you know is really kind of rewarding you know right and i think people who want to do this type of work and not just makeup effects or sound like just being in the film industry sure. yeah you just have to know that going in man this this is not a quick thing this is like literally surgery yeah every every shot is surgery you know and the lighting's got to be right the actors got to be right the clothing the make i mean it's such a a slow dance yeah. you know it really is and I think uh, people need to understand that who want to get into this. Like, you're not, it, it's not how you see it finished. Yeah. 
that's two hours. Yeah. But it took six months to get there. You know, you're you're lucky if you're getting four or five shots a day, you know. I think I was I mean, that's really like what clued me in. I think the other time was I remember watching them doing on The Devil's Rejects, they were doing these visual shots of I'll I'll I remember there's a scene in the movie where um Sherry throws a knife and it sticks in this guy. Right. Well, that was all digital. And I was standing there watching Dave kind of like clean up one of the shots and like, you know, doing everything. And he's doing it and he's doing all this stuff, which I, I don't know what it is. is I can't. Matherly you're talking about? Dave Matherly, yeah. yeah. Okay. And he's like doing all this stuff and he's like, yep, so now I got to do this. And this is, and he's, you know, show me this program and I don't know the lingo. And he's like, and all right, we're done with that and we'll render that out. And I was like, hmm. wow, man. I was like, that's a lot just for that one shot. He's like, oh no, that was just one frame. And I was <laughs> oh, like, oh man. <laughs> what? He's like, oh yeah, I've got another 80 frames. I was like, oh, oh my God. Yeah. You've got to be kidding crazy. me. You know, that's kind of when I was clued in. It's just like, like, that's a good analogy, surgery, because I'm just right. like, oh, my gosh, man. Yeah. How are you going to get this done in time? It takes you know? forever. Yeah. And not, not to keep going back to Walking Dead, but it's just fresh. Yeah. But, uh, you know, even the, we, we've got done the production end of it, which is the shooting end of it. Mm-hmm. Post, oh, my God. Those, our, our visual effects guys will be in post for months. Yeah. Trying to clean up shots and I fix bet. this. And, I mean, it just doesn't end, but nobody knows that. Nobody yeah. knows that that world just keeps going and going and going. Uh, to me, it's a miracle. When you see a finished thing on television or streaming or the theater, it's literally a miracle that yeah. that's even up there. It's almost a, it's almost impossible. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and if it's good, double miracle. Yeah, you know? right. Seriously. Yeah. You know? If it's good and original, holy right. shit. It's, <laughs> how'd this happen? Yeah. <laughs> Who are these people? Uh, let's talk about um, Sin City, because yeah. that's just a different kind of movie. Yeah, yeah. You know? Sin City, I've worked on both of them, uh, Sin City 1, Sin City 2. Um, one was so much more, um, what's the word, treat it like a highbrow thing, mm-hmm. you know? Uh, and it was at the time the first Sin City is you know it was groundbreaking. Robert, it was it was Rob, cool. It was super cool. Yeah. Robert shot all that like a comic book, and I remember uh, we we did all of it in on Robert Rodriguez's green screen, shooting one way the whole time. Uh, just for instance, there's a scene with Bruce Willis. He's on like this dock. Uh, for the, I think it's the Yellow Bastard segment. Mm-hmm. Um, so they would get like Bruce's coverage and they would just spin the dock and then get the other guy's coverage. So we shot one way. The cameras never went really into the set. So we would move them to get those those reverse shots and stuff. Right. But the cool thing was too, Robert had these two big monitors by, by uh, Video Village and one of them was the comic book frame and the other one was a live frame that had images of the comic book on this one so he could put the actors exactly where they were in the comic book frame. Wow. So it was pretty sweet. Like he was yeah. ma- literally matching frames in the That's comic awesome. book that Frank Miller had, had drawn. So that was fantastic. Come to Sin City 2, I just think number two was just too late. Mm-hmm. It, I think a decade went by. Yeah, it was, it was a while. Yeah. yeah, and I think it, it lost its magic. Yeah. You know, I think the crowd wasn't there for it. The first one was a, a big yeah. hit, you know. Yeah, I went to the theater and watched that one. Right, yeah. super cool. I have a great story about Sin City 2, though, which is pretty funny to me. Yeah. I was doing a lot of makeups on 2. Um, you know, I had Jessica Alba in her scars, I had uh, Michael Clark Duncan. He had the golden eye. Oh, no, it wasn't Michael. I'm sorry. It was uh, Dennis Haysbert. I think it's his name. Yeah, he, he's the all Hats- He's yeah. the Allstate guy. Yes. Yeah, yeah, him in the eye. I had Josh Brolin in a, a makeup every other day. Uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. And I, I, all these act, I had all these actors that yeah. put makeup. And then Mickey in the, in the uh, Sin City makeup. And uh, I'm sorry, the, the Marv makeup. Uh, but Mickey didn't want to sit in the chair a lot, so we had to come up with a way to put it on him quickly, you know. Uh, so we came up with a technique to get him on him quickly, and you know he wouldn't have to sit there too long, and um, you know get him ready. Anyway, uh, one day he, uh, I'm, I'm doing cleanups, and he doesn't come to my trailer, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm like, "Where's Mick? You know, like what, what's going on? You know." And then I, one of his guys comes over and says, Mickey needs you to clean him up in his trailer. I said, I can't do that. I have too many other cast members. I, I can't 
take all my stuff, go over to him, and then come back and reset up. Everybody's getting wrapped. I got to be ready for this is where we do the makeups, where we clean the makeups. Mickey got mad at me. <laughs> uh oh. He got completely mad at me. Uh oh. So he left that night and I never saw him. I'm thinking, he has a full makeup on. <laughs> he has like a full Marv makeup on. Where's he, where's he going? Yeah. You know? <laughs> and then, uh, and then the next day, um, he was first up. Yeah. He was first up. So I'm like, oh, he's going to be so mad. So I see him come walking toward me, and uh, he's just, he's ready. Yeah. You know? And I open up the door, and I'm like, good morning, sunshine. And he just rips me one. <laughs> he's he's just going crazy on me. And uh, he, he's upset about, like, I didn't do his thing. And he has, like, chunks of foam still, like, glued to his face. What? Oh, my gosh. And then he was done. I said, Mick, listen, are you done? Are you all done? Did you get it out? <laughs> yeah, right. And he's looking at me. I said, come on, man. Size, give me a hug. We hugged. That's said, awesome. listen, man, we got a job to do, dude. We got to yeah. get this done. You know, it's just, it can't be that way, man. I'm sorry right. about that, but this is how it has to go. He was super cool about it. Mm. From that moment on, our relationship changed. <laughs> and then he, then he loved me. I could tell you a million Mickey stories. I, I love the guy. I really do. Um, I've had some amazing moments with that guy. Yeah. yeah, really cool stuff. Yeah. There's a lot out there on yeah. him, like yeah. stuff like that. You right. know what I mean? And I haven't seen him since Sin City Two. Yeah, uh, I had his number for a while, but he don't answer, or maybe it's a different number. Because sure. I used to always wish him a Merry Christmas and right. How you doing, Mick? Every six months, how you doing? And it just over time, it just fades away. Sure, and, you know, yeah. it's, it's all done. But um, yeah, and Mickey made me a better makeup artist, and I think I made him. Not as crazy. <laughs> but I love the guy, man. I, there you if go. I, if I had another movie with him, I would take it for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that'd be cool. He's he's good in about everything he's been he's in. He's solid. He's yeah. a solid actor, man. He's he, yeah. it's a, you know, it's a shame the career has taken, the turns it's taken. But the guy, I mean, he was the next Brando. Man, yeah. He really was. That guy was just, yeah. you know, I was I was in his presence in Sin City 1 thinking, man, this dude is shit this yeah. guy this guy can act man right yeah it's great that's nuts all right one more yeah one more sure the hateful eight hateful eight man yeah. quentin to me uh, any time i can work with quentin i want to do it no matter what to me yeah. he's he's one of our our best filmmakers and best of course writer i mean it, it, being in you you feel how good he is at what he does mm -hmm. i mean he's truly a genius of what he what he's doing he's a, yeah. he's a genius of film i mean that's that's what the guy knows right completely um hateful eight was fantastic shot in telluride colorado yeah uh ski resort um every day we were at eleven thousand feet on <laughs> mountains and snowstorms yeah. shooting this thing it was a real test of will because it was so cold i remember one day we were shooting there's a scene where walt goggins approaches the uh you know the horse and wagon and uh we were shooting that scene and it was one of the coldest days i think of the whole shoot and i remember looking at the horses and their tails were frozen to their legs almost jesus just all ice like yeah. you, you could almost hear it like cracking when they would start to move that's how cold it was wow um but quentin i love i mean i just to me that's been one of the high points of my whole career doing, yeah doing stuff with him yeah he's he's a you know you're in the presence of greatness, and you know that you are going to work on something that's going to be awesome, mm -hmm. powerful, or timely, or whatever. And um, and he he expects the best out of you, which makes you always be on your toes. Right. And he, he because he he knows me, and he knows a lot of our crew that works for him. Mm -hmm. He's not opposed to pulling you aside and going, "What the dude? Come yeah. on, man." <laughs> That's awesome, You're one man. of my guys, man. It's like yeah. a football team. Sure. You know, you fumble the ball yeah. on the five-yard line, your coach is going to rip you an ass. Sure. And that's how he feels. We're that's making cool. something great here, and I expect the best out of you. Yeah. And it happens, man. He brings the best out of you. Yeah. yeah. I, I, it's every, a great movie. Every time we rap, I hug him and like, dude, man, yeah. I love you, brother. Yeah. Uh, it is. It's a fantastic film, you know. I've done Django with him, Hateful Eight, Dusk. Kill Bill. Kill Bill, yeah. Uh, we yeah. had a nice we have a nice run for a while there. We were talking at the shop, uh, me and House actually. This was just recently, like might have been this no, it was last week. Right. We were talking um uh, uh not the Hateful Eight, but um Inglorious Bastards. Right. 
And we were just, you know, kind of, you know, because I mean, really, it's what we do. If we're not talking Halloween, we're talking movies. You know what I mean? And I'm like, we were talking about, you know, some of the greatest movies, greatest opening scenes. And I said, I said, you might be surprised, but like one of my favorite opening scenes ever is in Glorious Bastards when um, I can't think of the actor's name, but when he, the the Nazi comes in and he goes to that French guy's house, Christoph Waltz, Christoph yeah. Waltz, yes, right, right, and he comes in and just from him going into the house and talk just the way they're talking in French and they switch. I mean, just the feel of it. And I know that's a lot of the actors of how they're doing it, but you know that that's a big part of Quentin. Absolutely. Getting that feel out there Absolutely. that you're just like, he's so, he's so, he's being so nice, but you know, there's something Absolutely. And something's going to happen. What is it? What's yep. going to, you know. You could feel that tension just love growing. It. It's incredible. Yeah. And and listen, actors, you know, uh, they, they want to be directed. Mm-hmm. And Quentin is great at that. I've been, I've been lucky to have this like kind of front seat with the movies I've worked on him with. I've seen him pull actors aside and give adjustments and they're, fuck it, they're perfect. Yeah. Like you go, man. That's that was a great call. Yeah, like, yeah. You know what a good call. And For then sure. you watch the movie and go, that was the take. Yeah, that was the adjustment yeah. right there. And I think good actors, I mean, like you know DiCaprio and Django. I mean, the guy's the best. He's top mm-hmm. of his game. He's such a phenomenal. I've never seen an actor do so many takes perfectly, take after take after take. Um, I think Quentin can help even guys to that level get a little more out of him. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He sure. can pull a little more. Yeah. And uh and that's why his movies are so like I to me, Pulp Fiction was is it stands alone. And that's mm-hmm. one of my top tens. Once upon a time, right there, man. Really? I loved Once Upon a Time. A lot of you know, I shouldn't say a lot, but I know people were like, oh it's too long. I think it's phenomenal. Yeah. I love Once Upon a Time. Yeah. That's good stuff. Really man. great film, man. Yeah. 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 I wish I worked on it. I didn't. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> did you like uh when you since you've been on um The Walking Dead, did you did the movies kind of take a back seat a little bit and you primarily on that or did yeah, you Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Walking Dead has taken my life for 11 years. Yeah. I've done a couple movies here and there like I worked on um Oz the Great and Powerful. We shot that in Michigan. Mm-hmm. Um Creed was another one. I did another movie called Southpaw yes. with uh, uh, Jake Gyllenhaal. Jake Gyllenhaal, yeah. Um, so I've had these little spurts out, but the bulk of it, I've turned down more work during The Walking Dead than I ever did in my career. Yeah. Just because I couldn't, you know, I'm, I'm on this for another three months, you know. Yeah. And I got, uh, it's a shame because people stopped calling. I was like, oh, shit, <laughs> don't stop calling. This is going to end one day. Yeah, this will end one day. Here. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I definitely missed a lot of stuff because of Walking Dead for sure. Yeah. Absolutely for sure. But, well, yeah, 11 years straight, man, that's that's a hell that's of a run. run. man. And that is a, a good TV run. for a show, that's a pretty good run. Yep. Yeah, because nowadays, I mean, it's... Not really TV. It's Netflix or right. Hulu or right. you know that's where we've kind of went, right? You know, which I hope you know. I hope the theater thing never stops because I love going to the movies in the theater. But even that, you know, with like HBO Max and you know yeah. all this other stuff going on, it's just like oh man, I don't ever want to lose that because that just is part of the fun. It is. I went know? to the movies yesterday. Yeah, my wife and I saw um, uh, Father Stu. Mm-hmm. And, um, uh, Mark Wahlberg, Mel Gibson film. Mm-hmm. I thought it was fantastic. I really did. I haven't I, seen it. To yeah. me, I felt like this is this is a this is what movies should be again. Yeah. You know, we've gotten a little off base with the, you know, the the protocol and and the agenda. You have to hit the marks and and, and Hollywood's, um, you know, they're they're making movies to please political agenda. I hate it. Rather than making yeah. movies that are just great. Just good movie. Just a good movie. Man. Just yeah. a great movie and. Father Stu had that feel of like, wow, this. I hope we lean more this way. Yeah, you know, let's start making cool films again. You know, yeah. and I just. Uh, and it's funny, Vic. I've that. That's the arena I'm sliding into too. I've I've written a, a bunch. I've been writing now for about 15 years, mm-hmm. and I have about eight scripts finished. But I have two that are starting to get pushed. Cool. I, I have a, a produ- awesome. producing friend in Pennsylvania. We're trying to make some headway. My buddy Sam. And we're trying to get that going, and I just feel like I I, I want to make movies that 
are like a father, Stu, where it's mm. it, it's a movie. You really feel like you're watching a movie again. You don't yeah. feel like you're watching. Okay, there's you hit that check mark. You yeah, hit that check mark. Yeah, you got that. Like, it's just you know a wash list and with a little bit of story here. Yeah, or, or it's a giant Marvel production, which you know you know if you're into that, that's great. You know, mm. and some of those are cool. But I feel like we've really lost our way as American filmmakers. We're just we're lost right, right now. The movies are terrible. Most yeah. of them are terrible. Yeah, and it's 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 been done. A lot of them. Have, it's been man. This has been done. Right. You know what I mean? Right. It's just like you know, and that's probably the the hard part about it. I would assume, you know, is finding that real original, you know, movie that someone can latch onto and be like, this is something fresh that we haven't seen. They're out there. Yeah. They're out there. And even if it's something like if you did a, a World War II movie, there's been a million of them. Yeah. If you just took a different approach to it. Mm-hmm. It's just about human drama, and it and that's what it we got to get back to. Right. I'm not trying to please the agenda. Yeah. Because that's what's destroying us. And other countries are they're not playing to any agenda. They're making great films. Yeah. We're the we are the film country. Yeah. We should be making great we've we've lost the game. Yep. It's over, you know. Unless we gain it back. I don't know. Yeah. We'll see what happens. <laughs> I can't remember it's it was recently, it was just a few weeks ago I started watching a movie and it's a, a relatively, you know, newer movie, but I remember uh somebody started smoking Oh, a cigarette geez. on the move. Like, they're <laughs> right. just like, he lights a cigarette. I'm like, that's kind of cool, not because I'm advocating smoking, but because you just don't see that anymore. Right, right. People don't do that in movies because there's this big anti-smoking. I'm not saying you should or shouldn't. That's your choice. But I'm like, that is the kind of thing that you just don't see because, like you said, they're marking off their yeah, check checklist. No, no smoking, no right. this, no, you know, right. it's like, To me, wh- it's, why? it's like, what's real? Yeah, you got movies are about making something as real as possible. Yes. So if the guy smoked, then the guy smoked. Right. It, yeah. And if you're anti-smoke, so what? Yeah. It's it's on a it's on a it's a picture. It's right. not smoking next to you. Right, exactly. You're watching a movie. It's Who cares fantasy, if he's smoking? Right? Yeah. You know, you're trying to tell the story as real as you can, and I think we've lost that because we're we're too concerned the other way now. To, to upset people. And it's yeah, like, yeah, exactly. Listen, I grew up watching all the 70s movies. You know, there were some that worked, some that didn't. I learned to go to the movies I like. Yeah. I, I wouldn't criticize a film for any topic. I'm just not interested. Right. I just won't go see that. Yeah. You know, I mean, what happened to that freedom of choice? It's, like, it's, it's, uh, it can't be that simple well, anymore. Yeah. You don't like romantic comedies? Why? It's like, I just, they're not my cup of tea. Well, then you must be sexist. Right. Whoa, hold on a minute. <laughs> no, I'm not. You I know? just don't like those movies. I just don't like that kind of movie. Is that okay? You know, it yeah. sucks. It sucks. Because there, there's even things where I don't even, like someone will point out to me things that are happening in this movie. And I'm just like, I'm just kind of watching and enjoying. And they're like, oh, you see that? And I'm like, what? What happened? Oh, well, this was all this. And this was, and I'm like, was it really? Right. You know, I'm like, right. that's that's really what this means? And they're like, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, this, this is a woke movement or something. I'm just right. like, oh, I didn't realize because I, I I watch stuff kind of just like <laughs> right. I want to see for the right. entertainment value. You know what I mean? Right. So I'm not sitting there going, okay, let's make sure that this movie is you know not going to offend anybody or you know what I mean? You can't. I just I just go in like, all right, let's see if it's any good. Yeah, and Hollywood you know? can't keep doing this or will really be done. Movies are escapism. They yeah, always have been. Sure. And you went to the movies you enjoyed. If you enjoy Taxi Driver, you're probably not going to go see Harry Met Sally. Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> both great films. Yeah. Great films. Nora sure. Ephraim, Scorsese, fantastic. But it's like going to dinner. Yeah. If I order a steak, you can't get mad at me for not getting the chicken. Like, it's just <laughs> right. what I want right now. Like, yeah. Leave me alone. Yeah. You know? It's true, man. It's crazy. It's, it's same, crazy, man. Same I, thing with us, with, with the haunted houses. You know, I try to tell everybody, I'm like, you know, when we're building it, it's like we want it to be as real as possible. Right. You know, right. we want it to be as real, but not real in the sense of, oh, well, we can't do that because that's going to offend somebody. It's a haunted house. Right. You know, if it, it still happens. you, you shouldn't yeah. be in this line yeah. waiting in, to get in. Exactly. You know? Yeah. But it still happens. Yeah, which is incredible to me. Yeah. It's incredible. I, I, well, I don't know how we got there, but I don't, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> that that could be a whole nother discussion. <laughs> yeah, of right. And, um, which, you know, I'm I'm all for, you know, your freedom to do whatever. Absolutely. But it's just it's just nowadays people have this, you know, thing about well, it's got to be pushed. And it's like no, right. not really. You know what I mean? It's cool for you to be this way. 
Right. And, it's, and but, I have no problem yeah. with it. Do whatever you want to do. Yeah. But, you know, don't force feed it exactly. to the masses, yeah. you know. It's crazy. But whatever. what are you going to do? Yeah, dude. I don't that's know. why movies are good, because you can escape that. You can exactly. find those movies. Right. You know. And that's how I felt with Father Stu yesterday. You know, my wife and I went, matinee. Uh, it, it was a decent crowd. I was kind of surprised that, yeah. you know. And it just took me in immediately. I was brought in. I forgot about the world. Yeah. And enjoyed this for two hours. And when it ended, I went, damn, man. Yeah. That's what we should be doing. Yeah. That's the type of type. We need to get back to that type. Yeah. Not exactly Father Stu, but that story way. You yeah. Know? It's the like process. Just letting it be without yeah. a, an agenda, you know? Sure. So, know. And that's the, the funny thing, like, there's a balance because like I always hate I'm not gonna mention the person's name because I don't want to get mad at me, but right. there's a certain person I don't like watching movies with because they always complain about that would never happen. Oh please. And I'm just like, it's not it's a, it's a movie. It's a movie. It's supposed to be right. fantasy, but yet still seem kind of real. Right. That's what makes your good movie. Right. But yeah, okay, so we know that if he jumped off that cliff and he lived. Yeah, that don't go jumping off cliffs because you will die. Right. You know what I'm saying? But it's it's a movie. You know, he's supposed to be this, you know, this character that can withstand something like that. Right. That's a fantasy of, you know, for you to watch and just escape the reality of, you know, wars and, you know, political right. agendas right. and, you know, you, you whatever sus- agenda is popular or whatever. You, you go into a movie theater, you buy your popcorn, you buy your drink, you go into a dark room. With yeah. Hopefully, a great screen and great sound. You suspend your disbelief. Yeah. They made this movie a year ago. You're just seeing it today. They're not up there doing this. Right. Yeah. yeah. Enjoy it. Have fun, man. And if you don't like it, leave. Yeah. Just walk out. I've walked out of many movies. I just felt like that's yeah, not working for me. I don't. I don't criticize them or bash them. I go. It just wasn't working for me. Yeah. I'm good, but I don't post. Yeah. It's yeah. like it's. But some people love that one. Yeah. So who am I to say who who loves what and who doesn't? I just, for me, not my cup of tea, I move on. I can't do that, unfortunately. My wife hates this because she's like, I'm ready to stop watching this. And I'm like, so am I. But I'm going to finish because right. I, 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 I got to see gotta what's f- going to happen. see it out, yeah. You know what I mean? But I hate reviews. I hate them because... Yeah, I agree. You know, everyone banks on them, right. especially in our industry, like The Haunt. It's got to have reviews. And I'm just like... You know, I don't like them because, especially with movies, because, like, for instance, I watched recently um, the latest, uh, The Matrix, Resurrections. Oh, right, right. Now, when it first came out, you know, and I tried to avoid it the best I can remember, ah, it's not that good. And I was just like, okay, don't don't waste your, you know what, don't don't tell me not to waste my time because I have a, a mind of my own, right. and I'll watch this for myself, right. and I just hate that when people are like, no, it's no good, it's no good. And I watch it, I'm like... Is it as good as the originals? No, but it's not bad. I didn't think it was a bad movie. Right. You know, I was like, whatever. But then... Were you entertained? Yeah. Then that's that's all you can kind of ask for. We watched it. It was cool. It was like, oh, I see the spin they're doing. Okay, yeah. And it was like, we didn't like, I'm ready to stop watching this. We watched the whole thing. Right. Enjoyed ourselves. Right. And that was it. You it's, know? it's like reading a book. Yeah. I could read a book and get an amazing experience. Somebody else could read and go, ah, it didn't work for me. So what? Yeah. I don't I don't have to yell at you. You don't have to yell at me. We just had different experiences. You know? Yeah. It's crazy, man. I just get along, people. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Gino, I gotta tell you, man, um, I appreciate you coming in and uh, gracing pleasure, the man. shakedown and talking Halloween, talking movies. Um it's been a great experience as always. Thank uh, you, Vic. Yep, and you too, brother. It's, yeah. it's a great scene. I haven't seen you in a while, and I'm so glad we finally got this together. Yeah. I know we've been talking, we've gone back and forth texting for yeah. almost a year, I it's think. It's been a minute, you know, yeah. It's been a while. So uh, I'm just glad it worked out, and it, it was a real pleasure. Thank you for having me. It was, it. it was great having you here, and we'll talk more on Creature Core, maybe get a mask going. Yeah, I absolutely. Will, I'll bring it on. I'll absolutely, show people. Absolutely, brother. Yep. So I definitely want to do that, but dude, thanks again. You got it, Vic. For coming in. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah. My pleasure, brother. Absolutely. Pleasure. We'll see you maybe another time down the road. We'll, yeah, uh, yeah. Maybe a year or so. Maybe. Let's do it again. We'll do it again. Yep. Maybe we'll throw a Dembski right there. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get a freeway. We'll, oh, jeez. <laughs> Not with that guy. All right. All right, man. Thanks, bro. You, you have got a good it, one. Man. Take care.